Naeem Hines, spokesperson for MDA. You're wearing a t-shirt. We see all the social media coverage, raising money, doing the right thing, and we can't wait to get into it. Uh, but first, almost five seasons in one place, middle of the country, Indianapolis, those Colts. Talk me through landing in Buffalo and joining the Bills. Uh, I think uh, it really just starts from that Tuesday, that Tuesday at 3.55 when Naeem Hines is going to the Buffalo Bills. Wow. Wow. With a Jeez. shot clock expiring trade on the books wow. made official. I get the call from Chris Ballard and they're telling me, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm being sent to Buffalo. And then, you know, at four o'clock, the Bills are calling me. And then their next question is, you know, they tell me they're, they're happy to have me excited. You know, they tried to get me the past couple of years. And then next question was, uh, can you get on this seven o'clock flight? So uh, I was in Buffalo. <laughs> at 12 a.m. the next morning. So what are the feelings you're feeling about leaving Indy and then being in this new spot? Uh, you know, there were some tears shed when I went in there and I turned my iPad. It was, you know, I've built a lot of relationships with uh, my coaches, a lot of guys, equipment guys over the past five years. And, you know, it's a hard place. It was like home. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, it take some steps forward in life, you gotta take some steps back. So uh, it was really hard to leave. But ever since I've been to Buffalo, I've been super happy, even though weather hasn't been that bad. So. Uh, it was bad, but honestly, when you're somewhere, when you go somewhere where you feel like you're wanted and loved, and uh, it just makes it easier. I mean, you were there for <laughs> about three minutes, dude, and then all of a sudden, you are the, the air guitar, the karaoke, the, the karaoke stuff <laughs> was amazing. What was that like? <laughs> It was just great. I told they they tried to pull me on there, and uh, honestly, I just said uh, play a song I like. And I was actually uh, in the equipment room, in the back of the equipment room, unpacking my stuff from Indy. And then I heard I write sins, not tragedies, come on, and I had to run in there and you know give my two cents. <laughs> I was gonna say it didn't really look like they were trying to get you to do it. It looked like you were like, oh, let me do that. Yeah, I mean, they, they tried to give me like ten or fifteen minutes ago, and I guess the right song wasn't playing. Then I heard one of my favorite rock band songs came on and. I guess I just, I just had to go out there and rock out. What's the energy like? Give me, you know, lots of expectations on this Bill squad. They look like they're having fun, but the pressure is thick. What's it really like in there? Like you said, uh, we're having fun, uh, but we know the pressure that comes with this. Uh, you know, they're trying to be Super Bowl contenders. They're trying to get over the hump, get past the AFC Championship game. And the only way you can really get through all that pressure is just kind of keep a little bit loose. Lab, joke, and honestly, all that looseness makes you become closer as a team. Who's like the class clown that you've already noticed through four weeks? <laughs> like everybody. Really? Uh, Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, and probably Isaiah McKenzie. All those guys are funny. And uh, everybody else is funny too, but I think those are like the leaders of making everybody laugh. What do you want fans to know and even, you know, pundits, people who have shows like me about how challenging it is to go from a place, the only place you know, to a new place mid-season and trying to learn a playbook? Um, I think what I want people to know is uh, with this process, everything in life that we want, we normally want it in instant gratification. But unfortunately, in life and in football, it's not like that. So uh, really, you just got to start from scratch, start from zero and uh, try to learn and get in where you fit in and just have some great helping hands along the way. I cannot wait to see the Nine Hines breakout game. Like, I know that you can win <laughs> just a few touches on offense so far. What is the plan and when is that game coming? Uh, I don't I don't really know the plan. I know that uh, they're trying to get me going and I want to come here and have 10, 15, 20 touches of offense, but it doesn't work like that. I have to know what I'm doing after earn those guys trust. And that's really where I'm at. I've had to play special teams and do some things I've never done before, but uh, that's what it takes sometimes to get to where you want to be and what it takes to be great. Hines, it's a foot race and they're not going to get him. Here's a quote you had. Before I go back there, I say, I don't care about my life. And my question to you is, how can you possibly enjoy returning putts? I, honestly, I mean, punts are better than kickoffs. I mean, at least in punts, you can fair catch it. I mean, but uh, honestly, it's just, it's a skill. Like I tell a lot of people, uh, either you can do it or you can't do it. It takes a special skill to be able to read the ball and be able to look up and down and, you know, catch a ball while there's 10 or 11 other guys trying to kill you. So uh, really, I think it's just the type of player I am. It's just like how I run across the middle and catch slants. You just kind of have to be fearless back there, trust your teammates and trust your technique. So what do you tell yourself when you're back there the second before it happens? <laughs> uh, honestly, excuse my language when I say this. Shit. Like, 
that's that's exactly what I say. And I mean, not on a bad way, not a reckless way, but you kind of have to just be like, screw it. What do you like, mean, not a reckless way? What? Because I mean, you can't just go back there and just be like, oh, what happens if the kicks are? Oh, what happens if somebody's in my face? You kind of can't think about that. You don't know what's gonna happen. You know what type of kick is gonna be, and you don't know who's gonna be there when you catch it. So you really just have to go out there and really be as fearless as possible and be ready for anything to happen. You have a big game against the New England Patriots. But what do you think? It's Josh Allen. I mean, <laughs> well, you get to practice them every day. You get to see what makes them really great. And uh, Josh is very, very smart. I, I mean, I don't think people really talk about how smart of a guy he is. They just talk about how incredible of an athlete he is, how great his right arm is, which are also very, very great. But uh, he has an answer. And when those answers to the test aren't there, he can pick it up with his legs. How do you sort of break down that wall when he has chemistry with these guys year in, year out? To start with, I'm on Josh's good side. I remember we were at the rookie premiere together uh, the first time I met him. And I remember he was just over there and they had him. We were all dancing in front of the camera. So each guy had their own dance. And for whatever reason, they played Shake It Off by Taylor Swift. And, you know, most guys aren't going to know what to do with that. So I remember him not knowing what to do. And I came over there immediately to start dancing with them. We had videos of it. So uh, that's a great icebreaker. Outside of that, you can just kind of go with them, joke to them. We yeah. talk about Call of Duty Warzone and stuff like that. So it's really easy to talk to Josh. So this game against New England, I got sidetracked. And you're going to have a little extra motivation out there because you'll be wearing custom cleats for my cause, my cleats, and you're repping Muscular Dystrophy Association. You are the spokesperson, and you have been raising awareness all over social media and through charity events, raising money. How did you first get involved? A long time ago, my grandmother passed away with it uh, in 2004. My mom and uncle currently have it. And uh, ever since about college, I've had a platform, so I've been just trying to raise awareness for something that's very, very rare. And uh, the, mu the Muscular Dystrophy Association has done a great job of helping me raise awareness. They cover a lot of things that people don't even realize, like ALS is a form of muscular dystrophy. So if you actually look into muscular dystrophy of this rare genetic disease, there's a lot of people who might be affected and they just don't know it's that type of muscular dystrophy. And your mom, you were only 14 when she was diagnosed. And she, as I understand it, tell me if I'm wrong, she spent a lot of time in the hospital in the past couple of years. And you've sort of grown up watching her battle. How has her strength affected you? Uh, yeah, like you said, uh, my mom in 2021 and 2020, she was in the hospital over 100 days. Uh, the past two years, I watched my mom. She's lived by herself. She's fallen and broken both of her hips at two separate times. So uh, it's been definitely tough. But I think the easiest thing for me to just remind myself is how watching my mom wake up every day. She has to struggle to brush her teeth. Uh, I have to help her with her hair sometimes. And it puts things in perspective that life is not as bad as you ever think it is. It can always be worse. And, you know, there's obviously I play a sport that's very, very physical. So there's days where, or times even in a game where I'm like, God, Naheem, your legs are tired. Like, mm -hmm. what can you do? And I think about my mom. My mom's legs are tired every day when she wakes up. Like, she just doesn't have it like she used to. I used to race my mom and now she can't hardly walk. I think the biggest thing with all this is just hearing my mom and my uncle's stories of everybody telling them they can't do something. And, you know, just thinking about me as a 5'9", 195 running back and people telling me things that I can't do and still can't do. And I'll probably try to prove <laughs> try to prove that I'm wrong the rest of my career. But I think just seeing a lot of the, my loved ones struggle like that has been really hard, but it's been made me a stronger man. It has, and now you're going to be wearing those cleats on Thursday and you're helping raise money. And the money is so important. I think especially and particularly with Muscular Dystrophy Association, which you know I work closely with as well and strongly support. And it's a really easy cause to support because there is progress and they are close and there's hope. And the fact that there's hope is such a powerful and beautiful thing. And so the money matters, the time matters, the awareness matters. Like I've learned in life, like hope is a very, very positive and contagious thing. And even as athletes, when you have hope, you can do a lot of things that you can't, that you can never imagine. How can people help? Uh, well, the first thing to do to help is you can just go to mda.org forward slash donate. And that's just for donating. But after that, you can just go on mda.org and look up and just really brush up on your research on it. Because I feel like if you just Google what muscular dystrophy is, you will learn a lot about it. And there's probably somebody within your family, family or friends that is affected by it. There's over 40 types. So if you can just brush up and really just raise awareness of it and just figure out what it is, you can help out and change a lot of lives. And there's probably somebody who is close, closely affected to you. You excited to wear those cleats? Oh, I'm super excited. They're blue. Uh, they got a little bit of gold in it. I haven't seen it. My guy Rodney Jackson's done well. 
I'm super excited to wear we're wearing all white. I'll have the blue on. So uh, so this week I'll have a little bit extra motivation. I can look down and see the people who motivate me every day to play well. So I'm super excited. And, you know, it's a Thursday night game. So I'm excited for prime time. It's prime time. It's MDA on those cleats. Your family's names on them. It's so such a beautiful thing uh, and a powerful thing. And I'm just I really hope that you score that touchdown. I need that. I <laughs> Now that we've had this chat, I just feel like it all kind of makes sense that you get in the end zone and then everything can just sort of come full circle. What do you think? Like we talked about, hope is a great thing and I'm hopeful that that is, that is a real thing and I think it'll be a great day for us. MDA.org is where to go. Bills fans, NFL fans to help support this incredible cause. Good luck against Belichick on Thursday. Thank you and thank you for having, thank you for having me on. I hope to talk to you again soon.